few days ago, I posted this question sa aking Instagram story. And I know most of you said na may mali sa sentence. Pero when I asked kung ano ang mali, that is when the problem started. That's what we're going to talk about today. Did you like my new intro? If you missed the old intro, I'm really sorry. I'm just um, trying to change things up just in response to a few of you guys who complain I'm have my intro. But just a quick little anecdote. I want to thank Francis for giving me this shirt. This girl can. This is going to be high up on my list of favorite shirts right now. So it's something that I will try to live out in my life. Now today, we're going to talk about redundancy error. So sentence correction, this is one of the errors that we don't have in spot. Lalo na nating mga Filipino. That was why I decided na okay, we natin ng isang full na video ito. Now, I also made an exercise for this. Okay, the link will be in the description box below. That is going to be from your ating teamlika.com na website. You're going to answer that after you watch this video. So don't forget to watch the entire video first. Now, in order for me to explain this better, I'm going to switch over to my PC so I can show you how to do it. I'll see you in a bit. All right. So when you encounter a question like this, sa exam, do you really know kung ano yung mali? Most people would look at yung mga tenses, okay, yung mga subject verb agreement, and then eventually, kung wala ka nakikita anything wrong, they would just say no error. But if you notice right here, tama naman yung order dito. Tama naman yung pagkakalagay ng kama dyan, kama dyan, tama yan lahat. Ang tangi mali lang dyan is this part right here, letter C. Ano ang mali dyan? Yung repeat the question again. Let me show you why that's wrong. Kasi, repeat, ibig sabihin, uulitin mo na siya. So when you say again, ang ibig sabihin din nun, eh, uulitin mo siya. This is what we call a redundancy error. Now, before we go on, let me just define muna yung word na redundancy. Sabi ng Miriam Webster's Dictionary, redundant is an adjective. It means exceeding what is necessary or normal. Ibig sabihin again, sumobra ka na. Parang pinaulit-ulit mo siya. And when it comes to English grammar, hindi maganda yung ganun. If anything doesn't add to the send sentence, ibig sabihin, hindi siya kailangan. At kung hindi siya kailangan, kailangan siyang tanggalin. Okay? Now, it's characterized by or containing an excess. So, ibig sabihin, again, using more words than necessary. Anything na hindi naman kailangan pero nandun ay pwede mong tanggalin. So, if you ever experienced yung uh, term na, na redundate sa office, dito rin ang gagaling yun. Ang ibig sabihin, kung ikaw ay merong ginagawa, na ginagawa rin ng iba, you're working on the same job at hindi naman kailangan na dalawa ang taong magagawa nun, pwede kang tanggalin sa trabaho. Yun yung tinatawag na nare-redundate kasi redundant na yung position na yun. Okay? Kaya ito yung nakalagay na holding definition, no longer needed for a job and hence laid off. So again, pag hindi ka na kailangan kasi may iba namang gumagawa ng trabaho mo, redundant ka, redundant yung position na yun. So, hindi na kailangan yun, pwede na siyang tanggalin. So, again, the word redundant means something na nauulit, which means the same na hindi kailangan sa isang sentence. Now, saan papasok yan? Tayo kasi mga Filipinos, mahilig tayo sa mga adjectives, mahilig tayo sa mga words na nagpapahaba ng sentence. And that's a common mistake. Whether you're starting out or kung magaling ka na mag-English or even kahit mga professional na writers, that's a first sin. Ako personally, hindi ako immune dyan. Uh, I also do that, lalo na if I want to emphasize a point, I end up uh, doing yung redundancy error na tinatawag. Uh, if I feel like I want to emphasize something, minsan, hindi ko napapansin yung adjective pala na ginamit ko at yung noun itself ay pareho ng ibig sabihin. Or yung dalawang magkasunod na adjective, ganun din ang ibig sabihin. Now, we talk about adjective, ang ibig sabihin niyan is a word that describes another word or kung ano man yung sinusundan niya. It can describe something else. So again, if yung definition ng adjective ay nandun na dun sinusundan niyang isa pang adjective or noun, then ibig sabihin nun, it is already redundant. Now, the best way for me to show you this is to actually give you an example. So let's look at this sentence right here. Now, what's wrong with this? Anong mali dito sa sentence na ito? Una sa lahat, like I tell my students kapag nagtuturo ako ng uh, ibang subjects, lalo na if they're, they're writing papers, so if I'm, I'm teaching psych or business English or um, political science, which I used to teach in college before, I tell them about uh, yung sinasabi ko, three-line rule. Ang three-line rule is if the sentence is long, so long, too long actually, na umabot na siya sa tatlong lines when you're typing uh, um, dun sa Word or kung ano man yung app na ginagamit to write your paper, 
usually may mali na doon. And that also applies here. If you notice, ang haba-haba nung sentence. Ang sabi, don't allow and give permission to your past history to completely destroy your coming future. Now, anong mali dito? Again, as Filipinos and as learners of a second language, or kahit na hindi, okay, there's this feeling kasi na the longer the sentence, the better it is. Na parang makakatalino kapag mahaba yung sentence. Lalo na if we're talking about mga, sabi natin, um, compositions or yung mga creative writing classes na nire-require kayo ng 500 to 700 words, right? When we're giving uh, when we're given assignments, sabihin sa inyo, ah, kailangan 500 words, 700 words. And kapag wala ka masyadong masabi, you end up doing this. You end up parang na pinapahaba mo yung sentence, gayong wala ka namang sinasabi. For example, in here, ang sinasabi niya lang is, wag mo daw hayaan na yung past mo ay sirain yung iyong future. Pero dahil ang haba-haba ng pagkakasabi niya, some people get impressed na parang, wow, ang haba naman ng sentence, ang dami niya namang sinabi. When in fact, it's actually wrong. Bakit to wrong? Let me break this down for you. Let's start with this first part right here. Sabi, don't allow and give permission to. Now, ano ba ibig sabihin ng allow? When we use the word allow, ang ibig sabihin niya na in itself is to give permission, right? They mean the same thing. Okay, they are synonyms. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Or, hindi naman synonyms kasi hindi naman word, one word, no? Pero basically, they are equivalents. Pareho sila ng ibig sabihin. When you allow someone to do something, you're giving them permission. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Dahil pareho sila ng ibig sabihin, hindi na sila nakakadagdag dun sa sentence. Okay? So, you have to choose. Kung i-edit mo to, tatanggalin mo yung isa sa kanila. So, instead of using don't allow and give permission to, you need to take out one of those. So, for example, don't allow... Pwede kong burahin to. Don't allow your... Ito na. So again, this part right here, that entire part is a redundancy error. Hindi na kailangan, kailangan tanggalin. Okay? Parang sa buhay din, di ba? If may mga, uh, may mga bahagi sa buhay na redundant, na mga bagay na hindi naman kailangan, hindi nakakatulong or nakakadagdag, pwede nyo siyang tanggalin. Kadalasan, minsan, pati tao. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Kung hindi siya kailangan, hindi siya nakakatulong, hindi siya nakakadagdag, huwag mo siyang intindihin. Tanggalin mo siya dun sa sentence. Okay? Now, sabi, don't allow, tatanggalin natin to, buo pa rin yung sentence, your past history. Now, this part right here, I see this happen all the time. I've seen a lot of people do this. Actually, hindi ko rin masasabi na never ko siyang nagawa. I mean, look, kung hindi ko, babalik ko lahat ng tweets ko or posts ko since I started using social media. I probably also made this error. Itong redundancy error na to is very, ano ba, very simple. Kaya madaling na, hindi napapansin. Bakit? Kasi yung past, when we talk about past, it already means your history. They mean the same thing again. Kasi wala namang nangyari na history na hindi nangyari sa past. At lahat naman ng history mo ay nangyari sa past. So ano ibig sabihin nun? You can, you can just choose one of those things. Hindi mo kailangan ilagay pareho sa sila. Okay? Para mo sinabi ang, nakara- ang iyong nakaraang nakaraan. Okay? Parang hindi na kailangan, di ba? Pwede mo na nasabihin ang iyong nakaraan. So, you have to choose one word. Again, either would work. Pwede mong iwanan isa. So, kunyari, sabihin na, don't allow your past. Kung past ang pipiliin mo, tanggalin mo na si history. Pwede mo rin sabihin, don't allow your history. Pero hindi mo na rin pwedeng iwanan yung past. So, again, we're editing. Editing na yung pinag-uusapan dito. But again, if biglang tingin, yung iba hindi yan napapansin. So, again, that's another error. Now, looking... At yung next part ng sentence, mayroon pa ba? Sabi to, to completely destroy your coming future. Now, there's another redundancy pair dito na hindi mapansinin. Ito yon completely destroy. Now, bakit? Kasi when you say destroy, ang ibig sabihin na niyan is to completely ruin something. So, the word na destroy itself already built in na means completely. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ganito yon. There is... Um, uh, parang hierarchy of words. For example, when you talk about damage, okay, this is a minor na version ng destroy. Okay. How do I explain that? Ganito. For example, meron kang cellphone, nalaglag, nasira yung screen. Yung screen lang niya ang nabasag. Okay? Ibig sabihin nun, that cellphone is damaged. Okay? Damaged siya. Na-damage siya nung nalaglag siya. Pero for example, meron kang cellphone, tapos minartilyo, okay? At dahil siya ay minartilyo, siya ngayon ay basag-basag na at sira-sira na lahat, okay? So yung mga spring nandyan na, yung baterya, nakahiwalay na, durug-durug na ngayon yung screen. 
yun yung destroy. You cannot use destroy kung screen lang ang naba- na damage or kung may unti lang na nasira. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Built in na sa word na destroy, na pag ginamit mo yan, wasak na wasak na siya. Completely na yung pagkakasira niya. Completely damaged. Completely wrecked. Okay? So, hindi mo na kailangan sabihin yung word na completely. Destroy na lang. Kasi built in na yung word na complete doon. So, for example, pag sinabi mo na to completely destroy, you're basically saying you're, you com- you, uh, to completely, completely damage. Okay? Or completely, completely destroy. Parang inulit mo na naman yung word na completely. So, again, it's a redundancy. Pwede mo siyang tanggalin. Na kung kunyari, damage lang yan, yung gagamitin mong word, Maka, you can get away with completely. Pero in this case, hindi na pwede. Kasi this, yung word na destroy, gagamitin mo lang kung complete yung pagkakasira niya. Okay? Parang ano eh, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na uh, wasak na wasak. Okay? Which is actually the problem with our language. Kasi sa, Pilipin, sa Filipino language, sa Filipino katulad na atin, we like repeating words. For example, pag sinabi mo, ang ganda-ganda, ang ibig sabihin nun, hindi ka lang maganda, maganda ka pa sa maganda. Ang ganda-ganda mo, ang pangit-pangit, ang galing-galing. So, inuulit natin yung mga words to emphasize our point. But in the English culture, English language, pag inulit mo, mali, redundant siya. Naiiba or nanenegate yung ibig sabihin ng isang word. So again, this is something we need to unlearn and we need to be more careful of kasi hindi tayo, hindi siya natural sa atin. Hindi built in sa atin yun. Hindi sa atin, uh, sa ating language, sa ating syntax, sa semantics natin, hindi automatic na mali itong mga bagay nito. So you have to be extra careful when you see uh, parts of a sentence na naka-underline sa inyong exam. Okay? Now, here's another one dito sa sentence na to. Like, di ba, tingnan nyo ha, isang sentence lang yan, ilang beses na naulit yan. Or ilang beses ko nilagay yung mga redundancy errors. Just so you can notice na parang minsan hindi pala siya pansin yan. For example, Coming future. Again, same idea dun sa past history. Bakit? Kasi ang future, the future is coming. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo na kailangan sabihin yung coming kasi yung future built in na yun. Na pag sabi mong future, paparating pa, rin, pa lang siya. Okay, para sinabi mo ang inyong paparating na hinaharap. So, hindi mo na kailangan sabihin yung paparating. Hinaharap na lang kasi mas simple siya. So, again, simplicity is better. Ito yung kailangan natin matutunan. So, this is a, uh, an error na hindi pansinin dahil lagi natin itong ginagawa, lagi natin naritinig. And sometimes, we also feel parang impressed kapag nakakarinig tayo ng mga tao na maraming pwedeng ilagay na adjectives or adverbs na kapareho. Parang alam niyo yung mga paper minsan na tinatambak lahat ng mga synonyms ng word. That is something that we need to be careful of. Okay? Now, I'm going to challenge you with this. This is just a sample. Actually, I will include a link do sa description box ng video na ito to an exercise posted sa ating website, sa www.teamlaika.com, so you can practice at home. But this next slide, I will give you three minutes to spot the errors in this next sentence para lang magkaroon kayo ng onting um, taste of kung ano yung sinasabi ko dito. Okay? Your timer starts now.
All right, let's see how you did. So sabi dito, the small dwarf was shockingly surprised by the evident appearance of the enormous giant. So again, same thing as kanina, okay? I want you to spot all of the redundancies in this sentence. Again, I added so much para lang mapansin nyo siya at para mag-ingat kayo the next time you see it, okay? So the first one is here, the small dwarf. Bakit? Pag sinabi kasing dwarf, automatic, small na siya. Ibig sabihin, you don't need to say small anymore. The dwarf is already small in itself. So this is a redundancy error. Pwede mo tanggalin yung small. The dwarf na lang. The dwarf was... And then, if Fininho should spot this one right here, it's also a redundancy. It's a shockingly surprised. And when we say shock, surprised na rin yun. So again, hindi mo na kailangan sabi na shockingly surprised. Di ba? Um, gulat na gulat siyang nagulat. Parang ganun yung sinabi mo, di ba? Hindi mo na kailangan sabihin na. Pwede mo na sabihin na nagulat siya. So this part right here, you can take away. This, the dwarf was surprised. Yun lang. Yun lang yung may iiwan dun sa first line. Now, sa next line, by the evident appearance. This one right here is also problematic. Bakit? Kasi pag sinabing evident, ibig sabihin nakikita. Okay? It's something that is seen or obvious. So kung nakikita na yung evident, ang appearance, yun din ang ibig sabihin niya, na nakikita mo siya. Ibig sabihin, hindi mo na kailangan sabing evident yung appearance. Kasi yung appearance, that word in itself, ibig sabihin na nun, nakikita mo siya. So, hindi mo na kailangan i-emphasize na evident yung isang appearance. So, we don't need this word anymore. We can just take it out. So, the, the dwarf was surprised by the appearance. Again, mas streamlined, mas simple, mas madali. Of the, and this part right here is the same as this. This is, itong enormous na is already a redundancy. Bakit? Kasi pag sinabing giant, malaki. Wala namang giant na maliit. Right? Hindi naman tayo pwede maglagay na, na uh, giant na maliit. Okay? Kailangan, the giant, the word in itself, already means a big person. So, it's already big. So, hindi mo na sabi, kailangan sabihin na enormous big giant. Parang ganun. Hindi mo na kailangan sabihin yun. Giant na lang. So, we can also take this out. So, the sentence, ang matitira lang is, the dwarf was surprised by the appearance of the giant. Okay? So, you have one, two, three, four. Four redundancies in one sentence. So your exercise doon sa link that uh, I po I'll post sa baba will be the same. Basically, I'll give you an entire parang paragraph. I want you to spot all the redundancies. The explainer for that will also be posted there. Okay? So if you want more exercises, go ahead and click the link sa ilalim. Right? All right, I hope you learned something here today. If you did, click thumbs up. Make sure that you share this video with your friends. Lalo kung mag examine sila. Para mas marami tayong matulungan. And if you want to reach out to me directly, get reviewers, shirts, or anything that I made, you can go to www.facebook.com slash teamlaika. I'd love to hear back from you. Thanks, guys, for watching. And as always, never stop learning. Don't forget to hit subscribe. If you haven't yet, hit the bell icon para wala kayong ma-miss sa mga paparating pa lang na videos. And, aja-aja, kaya niyan. Never stop learning. I'll see you in the next video. And, bye for now.